Hello, and welcome to another one of our videos. We are JHU Security, and my name is Andrew. Today, we'll be walking you through how to install, set up, and use ProtonMail. We'll start by discussing some of the basic considerations involving choosing an email provider. Then we'll go over the install and basic functions, cover a few of the features of the app, and finally, we'll wrap it up with a look at some neat special features provided by ProtonMail. If this is your second or third time watching the video, or you're only interested in some parts of the video, we have added chapters to make it easier to navigate. As a disclaimer, we are using Apple iOS and Linux for this tutorial. However, the process is almost exactly exactly the same on Android, Windows 10, and Mac OS devices. One noticeable difference is in how the permissions appear. First, an explanation of what this app is and why you should consider using a private and more secure email provider. Although email is often seen as an outdated medium for communicating, it is still used regularly for sharing both work and personal information. Business email compromise still remains one of the top threats for companies' data in regards to breaches. Social engineering is still an extremely common method for criminals to reach unsuspecting users, with 96% of those attacks coming through email in 2020. And phishing attack can campaigns are still on the rise. These types of email attacks are only part of the problem with email. The other side is the amount of data that free email providers can and do extract from your emails. Although that may not sound like a large threat to many people who feel like they have nothing to hide, this does raise considerable questions about privacy, especially since many of those companies have experienced the loss of consumer data over the last four years. Oftentimes, data that the user is not even entirely aware that the company has taken. We will make a video later in our Security Essential series about the argument that an individual has quote, nothing to hide. As a disclaimer here, Jehu Security follows and recommends safe practices with various services that contain deeply private information. That is, that if the product is only offered as a free version and is from a publicly traded company, then it may not be trustworthy. This may not always be true, but that air of skepticism often proves beneficial to security and privacy. Without further delay, let's get started with ProtonMail. First, navigate to where you purchase your app. This could be the Google Play Store, Apple App Store, or a website or packet manager on desktop devices. Then, search for ProtonMail. We always recommend confirming the developer on any app before you download. In this case, it is Proton Technologies, so we know this is the app we want. Go ahead and click Get or Install. Then find it on your device once it's ready. Upon opening it for the first time on iOS, we see our first request for notifications. This permission will need to be made based on your personal threat model. If you would like to support maximum privacy, then select Don't Allow. However, for those individuals with slightly more permissive threat models, it could be acceptable to choose Allow. Either decision does not have a significant impact on the app's usefulness. We will choose Don't Allow. On Android devices, you may get all app permissions at once when you open the app. On the home page, you can either log in if you already have an account or sign up for free. We will use this second option. The first step is to choose a username and the domain handle. As with many email providers, you may need to play around with the username to find one that is available. As a note, one reason we use an incredibly long and ridiculous username in this video is because ProtonMail does not recycle usernames ever. This means that once Bob at protonmail.com has been claimed, even if that user deletes the account, it will still not be available later. This is true at least at the time of this video. This practice may seem odd, but it is designed for security and privacy. Since many spam and newsletters have an indefinite length of time that they will continue sending you mail, you may inherit the spam from another user who had previously had, then abandoned, an email address. This will not be the case with ProtonMail accounts. You can choose between protonmail.com or protonmail.ch as you like, but there is no functional difference between them. Next, you'll be prompted to create a password. Ideally, you should choose a long and complex password and save it in a password manager. Once the password is chosen, you'll be prompted to select which level of account and email encryption you would like to use. 
High Security is automatically selected and has an RSA key of 2048 bits, which is very strong. Extreme Security, which has an RSA key size of 4096 bits, is available as well. Which encryption strength you choose will be based on your specific threat model. For the vast majority of users, the default high security with an RSA key of 2048 bits provides outstanding encryption and security. Next, you'll need to prove your humanity. We recommend the CAPTCHA, but you may select either of the other options if you prefer. Next, you'll be prompted for a display name and recovery email. Both are optional. The display name can be any name you would like, which will appear on the recipient's email inbox when they receive your message. The user account email is optional and is primarily used when you forget your password and need to reset it. The option to receive periodic news from ProtonMail is automatically selected, but you can disable it if you choose. If you have not selected a recovery email, you will see a warning that ProtonMail will not be able to recover your account if you forget your password. We will skip the tour in this video, since that would give away the next parts of our video, but you may find some useful tips going through this on your own. As a disclaimer, the various login information you see in this video are no longer in service nor connected with Jehu security any longer. Sending a message from ProtonMail is pretty much as you would expect from any email provider. Select the pencil icon to compose a message. Aside from the obvious options for the recipient's email address and subject, there are three options. The first is the lock icon. This adds an extra layer of encryption and security for messages to non-ProtonMail users. Messages between ProtonMail users are already always sealed from user to user, and so ProtonMail cannot open and read them. However, to other email providers, the message may be unsealed and read by the other email provider. This lock feature prevents that privacy violation and enables more private emails between individuals. The password will need to be communicated to the recipient. Jehu Security recommends that this only be done over an equally secure messaging service such as Signal, Wickerme, or Threema. Next is the hourglass symbol. Selecting this allows you to create auto-delete messages. As a note, this feature is only available in two cases. One is between ProtonMail to ProtonMail users. The second is if you have enabled the lock icon for users outside of the ProtonMail service. Normal messages to non-ProtonMail addresses will not be able to use this service. This expiration feature must be selected if desired and is not enabled by default. The third option on the email is the attachment. You can choose from your photo library, take a photo, or select another file on your computer or device. Finally, you can send the email with the paper airplane symbol in the top right or you can discard or save to drafts by selecting cancel and choosing an option. We will now review a few of the key settings available in the ProtonMail app. Most of these settings are available on both the mobile app and in the browser. At the very top of the setting page, you will see the current account. Tapping on this will show that you can add multiple ProtonMail accounts on the app. One note here is that several paid accounts can be added and accessed through the app, but no more than one free account. Under the settings tab, the first option you see is to adjust your account setting. Here, you can change your default password. Under recovery email, you can add, change, or remove a recovery email depending on the choice you made when you created the account. Under privacy, you'll see three options. Auto show images is disabled by default, and we recommend leaving this setting. This is intended to provide both increased security and increased privacy. The privacy concern here is a common enough practice for services to track when you open their email by an embedded image being automatically retrieved from their servers. The security side of this is that there have been some attacks where malicious code is embedded in email images and activated when the email is open. Links to both of these examples are in the description below. Request link confirmation is enabled by default. This is a prompt when you click on a link that shows the complete link. The purpose of this is to limit the likelihood of falling prey to phishing attacks, which often use a link hidden behind a button that you click on or by making deceptive links that appear to send you to one web address, but actually send you somewhere else. We put a link in the description below describing this sort of attack, and we will release a video in our upcoming security series on this topic. Jehu Security recommends that you leave this setting enabled. The last option is to remove metadata. 
This is disabled by default, but we recommend enabling it for enhanced privacy. Next, we'll look at the features for labels and folders. This may be similar to other services, but we'll cover a neat way in which you can incorporate these to keep your inbox organized towards the end of this video. To add a folder, click Add Folder. Give it a name and then choose a unique color or leave it at the default. Folders remove the email from your main inbox and place them there. To add a label, click Add Label. Give it a name and choose a color. Labels do not move your emails from the inbox or folder they're already in, but simply allow you a way to find messages easier. Labels can be applied in the inbox or in any other folder. The next option allows you to change your swipes and gestures in the app. You can set them to any of these available options. Back in the main settings page, you will see several options under app settings. The first here is push notifications. Pressing on this will take you to where the app is inside your mobile device's native settings. Depending on the permissions you chose at the beginning, you can either turn notifications on or off here. Again, we would normally recommend turning notifications off in most cases. Next, you can choose to use a pin or biometric, such as a fingerprint or face recognition, to unlock your ProtonMail app. If one of these options is enabled, you will also have the option to set a time limit for when you need to use this to log in. The exact length of this, or whether you do not use a biometric or auto lock timer at all, will depend on your specific threat model. The next setting will be to choose which browser the app uses by default, or where ProtonMail opens a link when you click on the link from inside an email. We recommend a privacy and security respecting browser, such as Brave, Firefox, or DuckDuckGo mobile browser. From the inbox, you can long press on an email and it will give you the option to select multiple emails. This could be to delete, move, or perform another action on several messages at once. For mobile devices, you can make ProtonMail your default mail application. This is primarily useful for tapping an email address from anywhere else inside your phone and being sent automatically to ProtonMail to send your email message instead of the native mobile app. On the browser version, there are a few additional options that you can use to further enhance your experience. In the settings, you can review your addresses. On the free account, you will have access to your primary account. And in paid subscriptions, you can add multiple addresses to the same mailbox or add users to give your family or business their own mailboxes and logins. Clicking on the pm.me tab lets you opt in for a at pm.me address. This can make it much easier to give your email address in a reliable way and to type in for various services. Note that on free accounts, you can only receive email to this address but cannot send from it. On paid accounts, you can send from the at pm.me address and choose to create another address with this shortened address connected to your mailbox. You can also enable two-factor authentication. Jehu Security strongly recommends enabling two-factor authentication on any service that it is available for. This can be managed through apps such as 1Password, Authy, or Duo Mobile. Simply scan the QR code with your one-time password app, then enter your ProtonMail password and the six-digit code generated on the app. Then save the recovery codes in a safe place. This might be inside a password manager or in an encrypted text file on a USB or SD card and then stored in a safe place. As a note, we show these here as part of this getting started with video, but you should never show your recovery codes to anyone. On the dashboard, you can see some additional information about your account. This is also where you can select a paid account from the options here, current at the time of this video. One final feature that we'll show here is a really neat one in our opinion. ProtonMail gives you the option of using what they call aliases for your email addresses. This can be used for several reasons, such as organizing your email as it arrives or remembering where the email originates from. To apply an alias, simply use your normal email address and then add the plus sign and an alias you want to add. In this example, we want to sign up for the mailing list to a privacy-focused website, and we want to make sure that the emails are remembered for this site when they get to our inbox. You can see here that the email still contains the alias. Next, we'll create a folder for the alias, then a filter 
that directs the emails to this alias address to go to that folder. Here, you can also see the link confirmation that we discussed earlier in this video. Now we see the email to this alias goes to this folder. This can be applied for gift registries, events, social media, or nearly any situation that you can imagine. You should now have all the information you need to get started with the secure and encrypted email from ProtonMail. At Jehu Security, we highly recommend that individuals choose an email provider that respects their privacy and supports their security efforts. ProtonMail has demonstrated their commitment to these efforts in various important ways. They fully support PGP, a recognized standard for email encryption, support for sending encrypted email outside of their own email system, and a remarkable ProtonMail bridge that allows users to extend ProtonMail security and privacy to a mail manager of their choosing, such as Outlook, Thunderbird, and others. While ProtonMail may not be suitable for those with extremely high threat models, it is an outstanding service that is as natural and functional as the most commonly used privacy insensitive email services like Gmail, Outlook, or Yahoo accounts. ProtonMail describes how they use the profits from their paid services to offset the costs of their free email offering, and that through this business model, they are able to provide a free service without pressure to harvest data from free accounts and sell it to third parties to fund their business. As a note, Jehu Security is not affiliated with nor endorsed by ProtonMail. We hope that you have enjoyed this video and click the like button if you have found value. A lot of time and effort goes into each of our videos to try to make content that adds value to you. To help others find this information more readily, consider subscribing and sharing our video for others to see. Stay active and stay secure.